Hello, my friends. Here we are again. This time we don't have the luxury that it's silent on the construction nearby. It was very loud this morning, but right now it looks it's bearable. They did the first of the work already for today. <laughs> so hopefully they are not getting too loud with machines. <clears throat> Should we make an effort? That's one of the discussions that are quite popular here, I think in other places too. A lot of the modern teaching is it should come effortless. Of course, you cannot make an effort to become what you are. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. It's absurd. You are what you are. And yet the game of this human experience is that we are anyhow making efforts all the time on the relative level. And we have grown up, built up certain patterns, picked up all the conditionings. And most of the time people have no idea how much effort they are always investing just to keep the same picture up to keep the same story going, to keep the same experience of apparent reality intact. And if we want to free ourselves from the tyranny of our own habits, we cannot avoid all the efforts. Why should we? So we can make efforts. What's wrong with it? After all, people are ready to make any amount of efforts for so many things. If somebody wants a degree in a university, they may make a tremendous effort, invest so much time and energy to get their degree, to get their paper, to get their appreciation from society. If somebody wants riches, it's a big house, a big car, you know, whatever, they're ready to make so many efforts just to fulfill their ambitions. But then suddenly, for your own spiritual unfoldment, don't make efforts. Efforts are wrong. <laughs> We make a tremendous effort without being aware of it to keep ourselves locked in our own prison that we have created in our own mind. And the effort is not to become something that we are not. The effort is to become aware of what we are doing and learn not to do that anymore. Learn not to imprison the consciousness in that little picture of the me, me personality. <laughs> it 
this effect, there is absolutely nothing wrong making an effort. It's not that you have to make an effort trying desperately to break through something. Just the effort of reminding ourselves in one way or another, hey, come, be alert, see what's going on. Learn to let go, learn to detach, learn to relax. Recently somebody said, but even to intend to relax <clears throat> is a doing, it's an effort, it's wrong. <laughs> it's complete nonsense to talk like this. <clears throat> of course, it's not that we should grind our teeth trying to relax, <clears throat> relax. <laughs> but we can very well continuously, again and again, give the impulse, relax. And in seeing what's going on, and then instead of getting all tense about it, if we are capable of relaxing, that relaxing is the way to let go of the old stuff. The effort is to learn to be alert. Learn to be in the timelessness of the now. Instead of, as we have the habit, as we had the habit for a long time, to just let the attention wander all over the place. Bring the attention back. The same person said, but even attention, it's a tension. So don't give attention. <laughs> it's, it's nonsense. Again, complete nonsense. The life experience is continuously like this. That the attention goes somewhere, then withdraws, goes somewhere else. It's something that is part of the human experience and we are doing it all the time, even if we are not aware of it. And we can very well bring the attention consciously back to that which makes the experience possible. When we become aware that it wanders off, we just bring it back. It is not a tremendous effort, it's just the sustained effort of reminding ourselves to be alert. There is nothing wrong with that. But we can learn to make the effort playfully. People, people know how to make effort playfully. They sit in an office, do their work, and I already think about after that they go and play with their friends some kind of game, play football, play something, and make a tremendous effort in that game, but enjoy it. Look at it as recreation. So it's not that everybody shies away from making any effort, but somehow, as long as we look at something is a terrible task, then the effort seems terrible. But if we like something, there's no problem to make an effort about it. Just going for a walk in the mountains, sometimes it goes quite steep uphill, but it's enjoyable if we like it. If we drag somebody along who doesn't like to come, then it, it looks like a terrible, terrible effort to walk up there. <laughs> if we really sincerely want to be free, if we like, if we love to be free, from the old conditionings, then the effort that is needed is not seen as a terrible task that we have to perform. We'll do it joyously, 
and we can more and more bring that playful aspect into it. Then it's not something that is heavy on the shoulders, but happily we go about it. And the more we do that, the more we become aware how much easier the whole life experience becomes, how much more joyous it becomes, and then the motivation is there to simply go about it. All this intellectual arguing against efforts, for heaven's sake, no doing. <laughs> Don't do anything. Let's not get seduced by all that. Yes, it is right. There is absolutely no need of any effort to be what you are. You are that pure divinity, whatever we want to call it. But not for many people, this is the true experience. But the experience is out of habit that I'm a person, separate, limited, with all the pains and aches that come along. And there is no way around of really making that effort of having a good, honest look at what's going on, bringing the attention back again and again to the present. Look what's going on in the mind. Look how we are reacting. Look, see how we are constructing and reconstructing and reconstructing the same patterns again and again, even if they create tensions and suffering. If you want to be free of it, we have to take the trouble to really look at it and learn to let it go. See the tension and relax. Now, Mori asked me then that uh, recently I mentioned we have to be alert not to drift away from that consciousness when we are in meditation, from that alertness. Then she asked, how do, how do you recognize that you are, <laughs> that you have drifted away? Very simple when you become aware that you start to dream away, that you are, and it may happen at a certain stage in meditation, uh, it, there is quite a pleasant feeling. And it's easy there to just a bit settle down on that level and then very easily drift away, dreaming away. And it's possible that this goes on quite for a while without one becoming aware that this is happening. So how do you become aware <laughs> that you drift away? When you become aware that you are thinking about what knows what, that you are dreaming away, that you are just a bit floating in a sense of, oh, it seems quite nice. Then, she asked, but uh, can I give some techniques to keep that alertness? You just do the same that you are anyhow doing when you're meditating. And as you have said, Marie, that you are doing the self-inquiry, use that very self-inquiry. When you become aware, oh, I'm just drifting off. Then you use that question, but who is drifting off? 
who is experiencing this? Hi. Hi. Yeah. And you're right. That here now timeless. Just the simple way how we are anyhow initiating meditation. We just do that again. And even if you are relatively quiet, there's nothing wrong. Once in a while, just asking again the question, who is experiencing that quietness? Hmm. Yeah. I am. Hmm. Like that you keep that alertness. No need of any magical practice. Just to remind yourself to be alert is the magic. <laughs> and so it's with any other way. If somebody could meditate in a different way, you just use the same technique. When you become aware that the attention is drifting off, you can just redirect it back to your meditation. You re redirect it, maybe simply to consciously breathe it. Within, without the order. Within, without relax. <laughs> you are right. You feel the presence of the divine for the doctor. Maybe if you do mantra, you repeat a few times the mantra, consciously connect, consciously feel that divine presence and then keep writing it. in meditation the same like when we are not officially in meditation we just have to have that alertness and remind ourselves to be alert and it's easily possible that you sit and quite for a while you become, don't become aware that actually the thoughts have drifted off and quite for some time. I have been spinning one story up and the other, and it felt, felt quite relaxed and easy and nice. <laughs> and when you become aware, you just don't feed it anymore. You just redirect the attention to that sense of being here now in one way or another. And if you do self-inquiry, you step very self-inquiry to do so. Right? I leave the subject. And I'm asking you, my friends, is there anybody who would like to come in? Anto, you are welcome to come. Yes, hello. Hello, <laughs> Leora. Uh, I came in really fast because you just spoke about what I wanted to ask, to share, as I've been practicing uh, non-identification, uh, partly through um, repeating uh, I'm that, and but things came up like a like, uh, question and um, realizations. So one of them was about the connection between um, non-identification and, um, I keep forgetting. Um, ah, and uh, authentic, authenticity. Yeah. Um, because now I don't know what it means to be authentic, authentic actually. Right. Um, 
What I've noticed is what you, you said, all the habits, all the yeah. habits, all the know-how to do, yeah. and all the actually answers to, to situations, which in a way, the answers don't change, the situations change, because the answers are like stuck in my brain, in my mind, and then I have everything somehow organized and arranged of how to how to move around life. So, uh, yeah. 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 No, please. Okay. Authenticity. What is it to be authentic? Usually people think I'm such and such a person and that's how I am. And then authentic is to do what I personally like. But it's not that. It's not that. It's not completely yeah. wrong. Yeah, yeah. Because the person is an expression of yourself. But if you are totally identified with the person role, then there is always that calculation, what is the best for this person now? What is the best? How can I do it the best way that I'm getting a positive feedback from the people? And how can I do it the best that I'm getting the, a personal advantage? And it's then the authenticity goes. You are authentic if you are aware that you are not that person that the person is just a role that you are playing in the theater on this world, in this world. But you become aware prior to the person, there is that sense of presence. That is not the person. And the more you are connected with that, the more you are authentic, because that is what you are, and not that role that we are playing. Because when you are connected consciously with yourself, with your essence, then more and more whatever you are doing is a real expression that comes from yourself. And when we are identified with the role, then the attention is always in the past, in the whole story, what has happened and uh, how, uh, how have I done that and calculating how can I do that and you become not more yourself but you are identified with the role so this identification with that role being aware that's just the role that you are playing and then you can play it but at, at the same time you are aware here now there is an aspect that is not affected the more you are consciously rooted in that the more you are authentic. Okay. And then yeah, you I, mentioned I, I, you mentioned that the focusing on I am that whether and I think the last time just at the end you said uh, you you wonder or you wrote it. Uh, you wonder whether this is a good way to connect with yourself. If it works for you, then definitely it's a good way. <laughs> it's not exactly the I, same. I use it. It's not exactly the same thing like the inquiry. The inquiry is more like uh, bringing the attention really into into a void, not into some, something concrete, but just that sense of presence, like. Focusing on I am that actually touches the same, but it gives us a, a, a bit something easier to hold on to. And if that works better to connect, then it's perfectly valid. What do you mean when you say the inquiry? The inquiry means the, the question, the, the self-inquiry, yeah. the who am I? Yeah. Who am I? Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. It's... Um, I, I actually, I find it difficult to repeat it. What I do is when uh, I become 
busy, like the mind becomes busy with uh, with um, habits. Thinking about habits, then I just say it, and then it sort of puts me, takes me away a little bit. But it, it, it's still on a very intellectual level now for me. At the same time, things are happening, and then. Of course, there is fear coming um, naturally because uh, I feel like um, like I had to take a decision like today, and um, I, I managed to see through that when I if I take the decision to cancel something, then it will bring up maybe emotions or questions on the other side, but I felt very clearly that for me, it was the right thing to do and to cancel this uh, visit. Um, and it's a, it's a strange place to be because as you said, and we all know, we, we keep uh, calculating yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then it brings sort of the emptiness. It brings sort of the not knowing and emptiness. And the, as I said, fear also. And also, for instance, not, not to tell things to people all the time. If I have something and not to share, to be more inner, yeah. not to share. Because once I, I share, then it becomes a thing already. Yeah. So this is also something I practiced this week. So I somehow, um, through that, again, there is like, also again, like sort of emptiness because I haven't shared and they didn't react. So there's no story. Uh -huh. Are you so see, but you, you see that sharing can be something very wonderful, great, if it's really something that's just an expression of the self that flows out. But most of the time, and it's very popular, share, 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 sharing. But most of the time that sharing is motivated that I can show something and get a good reaction. Me, I, the person. <laughs> Or that it's kind of difficult to 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 hold to contain. Then if I speak it out and I explain it, and then they react just to help me sort it out, and then again it becomes a story of something that wasn't a story from the beginning. Yeah. But it, it, right away it brought. I'm used to that. Right away it brings many friends together with and, and it becomes something that gives content and, and that gives something to hold on to. Yeah, and, and then get, continue re somehow creating the magic show. Um, as when I don't do it, it's, um, yeah, it's a new exper experience for me. And um, a bit, uh, yeah, a bit scary, a bit unknown and like, yeah. Right. Why do we want to know? We want to know because somehow it gives us the feeling of security. Yeah. And that feeling of security is for whom? It's not for what you are, it's for you, the person. I need a certain security, a yeah. certain I, the ID most of the time that uh, I know is illusory, but even having the ID and the feeling I know gives that sense of security, but it gives the security not to what you are. You as a being, don't need this kind of support <laughs> to secure. Nothing can touch you. You don't need a special construction of security. So if we, if you see that fear, then welcome the fear. See it as an experience, seeing at, as a feeling that comes 
an emotion that has a peak that goes, but you are unaffected. And if you see the fear like this, it's, it loses its thread. Yeah. And, then, and then you become aware, actually, it's becoming very intense just to be without knowing, without always having the feeling I know uh, all the things uh, that I'm on top of the situation. <laughs> it becomes more and more exciting simply leaving from moments without knowing. Let the situations come and you deal with them as they come. You need not know because you are what you are. Hmm. I mean, yeah, another what? thing, yeah, another thing is to look to actually agree to see what the motivation is. And that's also very, I feel it, it, it's very brave of me to actually uh, agreeing to see really, really what the motivation of doing or saying or sharing so and so. Yeah. And that again takes me to a sort of um, uh, authenticity, how do you say the word? And it's, it's very new for me to actually agree, to be really, really honest yes. with myself and see what is the motivation? Is it going to support the other person? Is it going to support yourself? Will it bring um, something better, something good to, 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 to the situation or to the world altogether? And that started just like a couple of days ago, really, just to really watch that. Yeah. So that's also is very connected to, to what we're now exploring. Yes, sure. Exactly. The motivation is supremely important. <laughs> and if we have a good, good, honest look at ourselves, we may get a bit shocked seeing what really is the motivation behind most of the actions. Right. <laughs> right. This is a, yeah, this is a strong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in my, in my sadhana time, there was a period where the past was very active, but I was mainly busy with getting rid of uh, suppressed anger, suppressed desires, and what others have done to me and my reactions to let go of them. And then quite later, the past came back once more. And suddenly I saw from another perspective, the role that I, I, I have been playing, but I saw much more details than what I was aware of when I was leaving that. And I was totally shocked and disgusted to see how petty the motivation most of the time was. Even in the good things that I did in my life, how always there was somewhere that calculation in it that if I'm doing the good thing, I'm getting personally that much benefit out of it. <laughs> Hidden agenda. Hidden it. agenda, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think that's a good place to stop now. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's going deep. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Ben. You're welcome. Are you? Are you? Are you? Is there anybody else who would like to talk? You're welcome to come in. Hi, I'm Bernard. Hello, Maria. Hmm. Very interesting what you've just been discussing because um, some days ago, is these synchronicities, 
some days ago I was thinking there is uh, I have somebody at work who uh, has a very standard expression way of saying everything okay todo bien you know when we say hello <laughs> mm -hmm. and it always puzzles me that question because it's like depends on what is everything <laughs> and it just you know I was reflecting on how how often when somebody says how are you I'm mean, left speechless <laughs> because <laughs> if I go into the story, I am so aware these days that it's a story that my mind will build up a story around how are you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's nothing. <laughs> so it's like, uh, yeah, it's an int very interesting. I, I mean, there are days where I feel the best thing is to say nothing during the day because when when I am in that that person space um, and I become aware that I am in that space I realize that this futile the exercise of talking very many times is futile really it just makes things more complicated for me if I engage in that so Thank you, because what you were discussing, it, it clarified those, those reflections I was having in the last few days about speaking, the motivation, when to speak, when not to speak. And yeah, um, yeah it gives a, a wider perspective. Yeah. yeah. And the, what I was thinking about is very different or perhaps connected, but is I'd love you to share something about um, any experiences that you had in the journey that you feel, yeah, were significant for you. That um, moments of change, moments of insights, moments of, I don't know, but something, perhaps if you, if something comes to mind as I am telling you this, otherwise perhaps you, you want to think about it. Well, you're asking that in a certain context. What makes you ask like this? <laughs> no, I, I was I was before we started the satsang, I was already thinking about it because I watched the interview um, to people lead of you that is in your in your um, YouTube channel. Like two two years ago. Green. Yeah, 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 I think, yeah, yeah. I think her name is Corinne. Yeah, and I really love and benefit enormously from hearing people's experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, when you were talking about when you went back to India and um, the clarity that you had about um, and moments of change when you move from one phase to another. So, I just wonder whether there is any experience or experiences that um, that you feel you could share? Well, I'm not going to story uh, storytelling, <laughs> storytelling satsang. I'm usually waving little anecdotes in when I feel it's uh, in the context. But let's come back to what I just said before. Yeah. Like sitting, sitting in Kerala, <laughs> sitting or not doing anything, <laughs> and and then being confronted against again a lot with the past, and uh, it came then real as very vivid experiences that I remembered scenes, and I remembered how I felt, how I thought, how I acted, how I reacted, actually much clearer than at the time when this happened on this material level. Just somehow it was given this insight in those situations. And I was especially shocked when I remembered harmonious, good situations. When I, when I remembered situations where I behaved like an idiot, then it was not uh, difficult <laughs> to see how the motivation was wrong. 
but even in situations where things are going smoothly and I played my role good and it was good for the other people, how tremendously much the whole thing was always person motivated. That, that realization was shocking that even those times when I thought this uh, really I did good at that time, when I saw a bit clearer, it became it became frighteningly <laughs> obvious that even the good things there was so much always the me 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 uh, somewhere always a little bit that calculation in it if I do that then people will like it and I'm getting a lot of f good feedback and they tell me oh they are so happy and it has helped them or whatever so it's it's very subtle. It can be very gross, but when we become more aware, it sneaks in subtler and subtler and subtler spaces. That still we do the, we do the same thing. Still the same mechanism happens. That uh, it just we have become spiritual oriented, spiritually oriented, and then <laughs> we keep the same personality, the same mechanisms, just put a bit another coloring on so it becomes subtler. And we may easily fool ourselves, oh, uh, everything has totally changed, but then if we are a bit more attentive, we become aware, hey, it's still the same story going on. It's all about the me, 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 <laughs> making myself bigger. Uh, having a good self-image and always struggling to keep the self-image up and make it better. This realization was shocking and helped a lot of being more alert and still after that becoming aware, it's tricky. Even if you feel, oh, now you sort of caught it, you got it, it was possible to let it go. It has the tendency to sneak in again subtler, in a subtler way and do the same stuff again. And if you are alert, sooner or later you become aware, uh oh, <laughs> it's, still, it's still the same mechanism. <laughs> so it's good to keep that alertness and just have the courage to see, hey, building up that self-image and just struggling always to keep that uh, wonderful me, me self-image up and do all the things to keep, uh, keep it pure and nice and beautiful and maybe more spiritual. We can just completely detach from that. It's not about getting, becoming a better and better and better person. It's about becoming aware, I am not this person. I am prior to this person. And this beingness that you are doesn't need all these external tricks to, <laughs> to keep it up and pure. It's pure, pristine. It's never touched by any of all this. There are like two mechanisms that I'm becoming more and more aware that are so connected to this, to this keeping up this self image is the fear of rejection and the desire for approval. Yes, right. So that seems to be, I would say probably after the fear of physical survival, the, yes. the, the, that, that very deeply ingrained fear, it seems to be the next one that and I feel that the freedom, the free, freeing myself from those two um, seems to be critical, really. Right. But it's really the freeing yourself from those two is what matters <laughs> to be free. <laughs> So don't be afraid of 
having a good look at those mechanisms whenever they lift their head up and learn to relax them, learn not to be pushed by them. Then in the situation, you still have the freedom to decide this way, that way. And if we can be nice to people and if we can please people, wonderful. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if we need to do so because we need the positive feedback, then somehow we become slaves. Then there can be no freedom. You are free. Now, you have never been bound. We have to become aware of that. And the more we become aware of that, the more that self-confidence is increasing. And the more that self-confidence is there, the less you need approval. And then you lose yeah. the fear of it, of not getting it. You lose the fear of rejection. If somebody rejects you, okay, so what? You're still complete in yourself. It cannot really affect what you are. Doesn't mean we have to start, start now, behave <laughs> uh, like idiots and offend everybody. Yeah. We can very well harmoniously go through our life. And if it's possible, let's be nice to people, but not because we need their approval, simply because it becomes a genuine expression of yourself. Yeah, and it's now nowadays it's an interesting context because with social media, yeah, with so much emphasis on in, uh, interaction and feedback, yeah, and and even I mean the the it's not just the Facebook, the is the the likes in the giving feedback. Every time you you call a service, you get a message of feedback. So the person is also whoever is giving you the service is under the pressure of the feedback that the customer is giving. In educational institutions, feedback from the students is uh, considered really very highly regarded these days, yeah. much more than before. So it's like the environment is constantly feeding onto the feedback. And at the same time, uh, inside the urge is for releasing all that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. And uh, you're Perfectly right. The social media is totally constructed like that to cater to the personality, to show off your personality and get all the likes and all the nice comments. <laughs> but then you can also use it without getting yeah. into it. But uh, it's definitely constructed to glorify the personality. Personality, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We have to see it, and then yeah. we can learn not to fall in the trap of it. Thank you so much, Werner. You're Thank welcome. Hario. Hario. Is there anybody else who would like to talk? You're welcome to come in. Hello, Werner. Hello, Nelly. Uh, it's close for me what you talked about with Marie, uh, about personality. Yeah. I, uh, yes, I watch it myself and see these uh, things in me. Um, and see my, for example, some expectations, and uh, when I expect something from from someone, uh, and feel and, and doesn't fulfill, yeah. I see I I, I find uh, in myself something like angry or offense. I I and I thought that I don't expect anything from people. I thought, <laughs> but I, <laughs> but I see that it's not right because I, uh, some little things I I find in myself. Yes, and uh, I just yes feel that I I want to take offense. It yes, it goes from 
from from myself yeah and um, i see that due to meditation and due to this uh, 12 steps program i see it more clear these these things and uh, i learned to to focus on myself not on other people what they say what they do but mm -hmm. to turn to myself what i feel what i do <laughs> and to work with uh, with my reactions and uh, it's not easy sometimes yeah but uh, i got this understanding that really people are just people like me and have their reactions and um and behave and behave as they can like me yes and <laughs> when i remember myself that i i'm not good in uh, you know, all in all things and all situations and uh, remember that <laughs> i'm not ideal yeah to accept other people behaviors mm. yeah, and uh, and my and my own so i i see that this is a, um, a long way for me it's a, it's a <laughs> A lot of things I have to, I, I want, I'd like to uh, improve in myself, to in my reactions. So I would, I learn to be more quiet, not to um, react so, so yes. intensive. Yeah. Right. And uh, of course, why do you want that? Because it's natural for you. Your natural state is to be at peace, at ease, in harmony, joyously. <laughs> and naturally, we want to come back to that. And once we have a good look at ourselves, then we see what stands in the way. So naturally, we want to remove it. You said it's a, still a long way. It always looks like this. All we have to do is go about it. And when we see those obstacles, then we can learn to let them go. And when you see that, uh, okay, some people behave in certain ways, and then you become aware, oh, I did have my expectations. And there is a reaction. As long as you see it, and it's not overwhelming you, then it doesn't do any harm. Okay, the reaction comes, it's there a moment, and if you are not holding on to, it goes also, it doesn't leave a trace. What becomes harmful and draining is we hook into it and justify our situation. I'm right, they are wrong, I'm right, they are wrong. <laughs> and, and think about it and hold on to it, and then it's sort of like, it starts to really drain our vitality away because we are carrying something with us that is not more there except in our memory that we hold on to and we make a conflict in the memory and then we see the other person and me as person and I'm right and they are wrong and feed that whole story we are spending a lot of energy just to keep it up. But otherwise, if for a moment the reaction comes, but you see the reaction, you let it come, you experience a moment, you let it go, there is no harm. Yeah. We have the tendency then to justify our pers person, our position as a person, and then the, the whole mechanism starts and we keep it up instead of letting it go okay there was a situation unpleasant situation it was there it's gone we can let it go and if uh, with yourself the same thing you have expectations 
now how you should be capable of handling situations and then the situation comes and then uh, it doesn't go up to your ideas how you should, should be capable of doing, then, okay, it has come. You may have overreacted. You may have still reacted in ways that you decided you don't want to react, but you see it, it's there, you let it go. Maybe you strengthen the intent that you want to be free of it and you can let it go. Not keep it in your mind and start to berate yourself and think I'm not good and I'm not good enough, I should get better. <laughs> Just, okay, there is some more work to do there. Nothing wrong in that. <laughs> yes, I learned not to... Even if uh, everything is okay, I... Uh sometimes think that I could uh, do something maybe better. And I understand this is another trap of the mind. Yes, we could always do a little better. So never, yeah. never, never mind about it. <laughs> There is no such thing like perfection yeah. in this material level. Everything is related. Everything has positive and negative aspects. We can get as close to be harmonious on this level as possible, but there is no such thing as perfection. It's like when something is really perfect, it disappears. <laughs> As, as soon as there is the manifestation on this material level, all is in that polarity of positive, negative, and everything becomes relative and has positive and negative aspects. So when situations are in such a way that you feel it's fine, that you feel in harmony with them, then it's fine. And even if there are some negative, little negative aspects in it, so what? It's part of the experience on this human level in this world. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And one more thing I'd like to share. Uh, uh, recently, uh, two last days, I I feel something pleasant. I uh, I feel some maybe like connection with myself or with uh, some how to say high power. I don't know because uh, in this program we learn to have this concept in high power, and uh, uh, I see I understand that this is inside us, uh, this divine essence, uh, yes, maybe it is easier to, uh, to connect with it like it is outside, but, um, but it is inside, and, and the, uh, in the end we, we find it inside of ourselves, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I feel something, uh, something pleasant, like when I remember about it, I feel that someone uh, like stands behind me, someone like high power. I don't know how to, <laughs> how to describe, but I feel some, uh, this is a feeling of uh, safety and uh, that uh, some pleasant, some, I don't know how, some care, like uh, I am here, like someone, something uh, take care of me, something like this. I just watch it and yes, it makes me, um, uh, feeling good. Yeah, just, just wanted to share this is something new that I, found out last last days yeah wonderful <laughs> just in case even if in future now it's not always so easily accessible like just now 
don't feel disheartened. Don't think that uh, something wrong has happened, but then you can remember this experience and draw inspiration from it. Be grateful that it goes so easy. And then gradually it will be more and more established and become more and more powerful. That, that sense of well-being and security is there without any particular reason, simply because it's natural. Yes, yes, it's very pleasant thing. Yeah, like very I'm good. embraced of <laughs> someone, <laughs> something. I... Yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, can it be? Uh, can I uh, can I apply it uh, like uh, a practice when I remember this uh, this feeling and connect with it? The day practice, yeah, in every everyday life. Sure, definitely. If it helps you to open the heart to keep the connection, or or if it's a way slowly drifted away, to remember and open the heart. But remember wisely, not with the idea, I remember and then in this way I can bring it back. Just remember and in the memory also the nice feeling that you are experiencing also comes back at least to some extent but then uh, in that you can relax and that helps you to open up to reconnect again stronger when it's fading away so you can you integrate it in your practice like do what you are anyhow doing but uh, somehow you can merge it with that aspect Okay, thank you, Werner. Thank you. Hario. 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 <coughs> All right. Is there anybody else who would like to talk? You're welcome. Now Nelly just asked, can I use what I'm experiencing, use the memory as a, as a practice to help to connect? Yes, of course, whatever works is fine. We may have these blueprints of traditional practices well-used paths and many people have been successful using those techniques, using those going, walking those paths. These are general blueprints, but then each one is finding their own unique way. And the essence of all the practices, as I have repeatedly said, the essence is that the practice helps us to connect consciously. To help us to wake up from the dream of being a separate personality and come back to that sense of presence that is connected with all that. This is the essence of the different practices. Some practices are there to develop certain abilities, fine. These are not, uh, then the goal of that practice is not to really be consciously yourself. 
or it's a roundabout way. <laughs> Whatever helps us to consciously connect is simply perfectly valid for ourselves. Then sometimes the people do something, experience something nice, and then their tendency is to go and try to make other people do the same thing, tell them, look, that's how it works much better. <laughs> and there we are wrong again. It may not. What works for that person may not work for me. What works for me may not work for them. <laughs> You are that essential divinity. And whatever helps us to bring the attention back and become aware, become more aware of that descent is perfectly valid. Each one has their own unique, beautiful story how that awareness is developed. You can draw inspiration from masters, from stories, from each other. And yet, we walk our own path, let it unfold beautifully in its own unique way. All right, I'm asking again, would anybody like to talk? Hi, Umbaner. Oh, hello, Klaus. Hi. Uh, I have this um, idea that when I am feeling less contraction in my body, I am more the self. Uh, and I don't know if that is an idea or if it's the truth. You want to add something more, or shall I talk? I, uh, I want I, I, I want your uh, opinion about this uh, uh -huh. co contraction about what because I, f I feel uh, I can add something more. I feel sometimes I feel like uh, I just feel like everything is just energy. It's just energy. It's nothing more. It's all else's story. It's just what is and. And this can last for some seconds, and uh, then it's like it's it's coming back again with, with this contraction. And uh, uh, it feels like uh, I am making a story that I am more the this, 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 this self. I know I'm always the self, but I experience more the self when I'm less contracted. Uh, can, can you help me get past this stage, past this uh, this way of thinking. I, I want you to elaborate on this. Right, as you said, you are always the self. <laughs> so you cannot be more the self, but the experience may feel like that, that you are more mm -hmm. or less the self, that you are more or less connected with the self. You are always connected. We cannot be a split moment apart from that, but still, the attention can be co more consciously connected with that. And then you're right, immediately it feels more expansive. And the more we are identifi identifying with that whole story that creates the sense of separation, the more the feeling is there of contraction. So, you need not jump to conclusions when you have those experiences and think, yes, that's it. But it's the, it's the good direction, definitely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Many it's very people, uh, li liberating. <laughs> right, it's liberating. Many people have experiencing experiences and then after that they remember the teachings and then they jump to the conclusion, yes, that is it, that is the truth, that is the essence. So uh, simply don't 
do that because otherwise eventually it becomes a new obstacle that we have to gain, uh, get rid of. Be very happy when it happens and know this is the good direction. You can, yeah. uh, you can continue like this, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I all, it also seems like uh, when this is happening, I become more, uh, uh, less self-centered and more uh, giving to the world. It feels like I, I am more like just doing things without a personal agenda, like you were talking about earlier. It's just right. more happening. It's more like serving than doing it for uh, my own sake. Sure. Yeah. It's the more the experience is constructed in that little me, me bubble, the more invariably the motivation for actions will be to somehow uh, keep that <laughs> little bubble alive and do it for the pleasure and the sake and the security for that little yeah. bubble. And if you become aware of more expensiveness, you become aware that you are connected and then your action automatically are just because they come from that space more for the good of the whole and not of the good or for the sing singled out good of a personality. That doesn't mean yeah. uh, what is good for you personally cannot also be good for the whole, but the yeah. The experience, the motivation is different. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it feels like it's uh, more and less just happening instead of uh, I have to think, oh, this is right, this is not right, or I have to uh, take care of myself so I don't get exploited or someone is trying to rule over me. It's uh, It feels uh, different, and it took some time before I realized that it was a change with this. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's good to get some, uh, some light on this. And uh, yeah, I think you clarified the see a couple of things for me, Werner here. So uh, I, I am grateful. Very good. I wish you well. <laughs> I wish you well too. <laughs> <laughs> we have some more time if you want to. Is there anybody else who would like to talk? You're welcome. Hello, Rana. Hello, Patrick. <laughs> Um, I want, want to come back to your um, first theme about attention yes. and and especially how long to sit to sit um, with self-inquiry or meditation um, or to do other things um, like work work um, that um, maybe I like to when I have the choice, um, um, to do the one or the other thing, um, do I the choice and when I do the choice or do not the choice, um, how to decide to sit one hour or, or all the day like you for some time? <laughs> well, if you have that desire to sit the whole day long, you may make periods. That's not the set that after that you are condemned that from then on you have to sit day in and day out of your bum only and do nothing else. <laughs> it's not for many people that this is the right path. But if you have the desire, then you can also do like the, for yourself or in a group do a retreat like this and then maybe come back to be again more active. Do as it feels natural and right in your heart. It's not uh, an answer I can give you now and that is the right thing and that's how it is for everybody. <laughs> and even for the same 
person, it may not be the right thing now, and in a year it may be the right thing, or what is now the right thing may not be the right thing in a year. So let it naturally, organically develop. But if that urge is there to sit more, you can also increase the time. And if then uh, you feel there is a more a time of being active, you can also reduce it again. Just don't give it up completely, even in the times when you are more in an active phase. And look into yourself. Am I now simply telling myself I should sit more? After all, this weather guy, he said the whole day long. <laughs> so maybe I should sit low. <laughs> Is it coming from your head? Because you think, again, if I would do that, I would get more out of it. Or is it really a sincere, honest urge that comes from yourself? It's time now for a period to increase the sitting time. But for most of the people, Generally, it's more advisable to have a somewhat a balanced practice that you have every day some time where you withdraw, where you are not busy with anything else, but then also be again active, be again with people and just bring in that same spirit as good as you can into the active period. Okay, thank you, Werner, for your answer. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Hurry on. Hurry on. Hurry on. Hurry on. That's the thing. Externally, we cannot really make rules that are applicable all the time. The traditions, all the traditions, they have a lot of do's and don'ts. And they have helped humanity somewhat to keep a bit in line without, <laughs> without those, maybe we would have behaved even worse. <laughs> But the more we become conscious, the less it's necessary to have strict rules. That's how it is in many things. All the moral rules that we are picking up on the way, we need them because we living in that sense of separation, identifying and are always a bit at war with what we consider as not me. <laughs> and then uh, all these moral rules are given, how to behave, how to not behave. And then we start to be spiritual and then we have all these spiritual rules, how to live our spiritual life to get somewhere. What is needed is sincerity. And sincerity doesn't mean exactly uh, what kind of external timetable we are building up. Sincerity means that we sincerely remind ourselves to connect whenever we become aware that we, our attention is disconnected. And every day having some time where we are doing nothing else is certainly very helpful. And if there is time, and if there is the urge and the energy to do so, we can increase the time. And if somehow by the circumstances we are called to be more active, we can reduce it. It's good not to give it up completely, but it's good to be in harmony with what comes really out of ourselves. But then sometimes the circumstances force us to not being capable of exactly manifesting 
what we feel we would like, then we are just and feel again, honestly, sincerely, how much do I give in to that external pressure and how much do I not give in? And if we are clear that then we are again in harmony with the situation, with what is, with what I am, then we go about it. And then there is no problem. Then everything becomes practice. We can turn everything that we are doing into practice to become more self-aware. And that is the point of practice. And the more you are at ease, at peace with yourself, the less there is the need of any rules, be it about building up a timetable in this way or that way, be it about moral rules. We don't need the moral rules anymore once we are in harmony with ourselves because we are not going out to hurt people or other living beings unnecessarily. Why? Not because of any rules, simply because it is not natural. When you are at peace, in harmony with yourself, then we don't do things that are not natural. Sometimes a hurt cannot be avoided because people may come after us with their expectations and we feel, no, it's right not to give way and they may feel hurt. But actually, it's not I that is creating that hurt, but they are creating it for themselves. So we cannot just completely, totally avoid that there is a certain hurt sometimes. In a world where one species lives on the other. After all, we are eating all the time. And even if we are vegans, even if we are pure vegetarians, we are still living, eating living beings. So a certain hurt is there, but it's in harmony. It's, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But if we are in harmony with truth, with the self, we are not going out hurting living beings unnecessarily. And so we don't need special moral rules. Simply in every situation, naturally, we are just in the natural way of functioning. And sometimes people like it and sometimes people don't like it. <laughs> and some people will feel elevated and some people will feel hurt. It's sometimes very useful that I create for myself a certain rule to develop a certain discipline. That I say, okay, now for some time, I'm going to sit every day that much time. And then do develop a certain self-discipline about it, there is nothing wrong. But it has to come from the heart, not simply that I think I should do so, because if I force myself to do so, that will be good, that will be better for my spirituality. Be honest with yourself. And then we become more and more aware. Uh, that message comes from our own source. Now for some time, there be a bit more like this. Now for some time, be a bit more like that. And then life brings a lot of unexpected situations that we have to somehow integrate in the whole of it. 
<coughs> root matrices, no matter what is happening, we remind ourselves to connect and relax. Connect and relax. Hurry on, hurry on, hurry on.